Hi everyone. <clears throat> Hi, happy Friday. How are you? Hi, let's keep it all crossed. <laughs> Hi Jane, how are you? Hi Sarah. Oh Sarah, you've sent me a message. Um yeah, we are hoping to record this. Um obviously just bear in mind all the fun I've had recently. Um but all going well. Um yeah, it will be recorded, Sarah. Hang on now, I just get Emily there. Okay. Um Hello. Hello again. <laughs> my lips are crossed. Yes, I've got everything crossed, which isn't my usual way, but I'll give it a go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, if anything, if anything goes askew, we just stop. And as we said, we're going to transfer to Zoom and then we can put it up for people later. So yeah. anyway, oh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. <laughs> you up there a bit. Yeah, great. Okay. Um, Okay, I can see you fine and I can hear you fine, Emily. Great, and I can see and hear you fine too. Great, okay. So, yeah, let's get cracking. <laughs> um, so, um, let's talk about what no one talks about, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm always, I'm always in a bit of a bubble because I talk about sexuality to everyone and everyone seems to talk to me about it perfectly fine. So, um I have a different experience to most people uh, about not not talking about sex, but I do understand that it's a very difficult topic for a lot of people. Um, I think, where would you like to start? Um, I, I think like what you were saying, um, in my circle, I talk about, I talk about menopause to the fish, to the fish man, to the butcher. It's like, you know, so we do, we do kind of, you know, get into our own little kind of spheres of comfort. And I guess we forget. Hi, Myra. Sorry, and um, we kind of forget that really there's a lot of this that people don't talk about, and even with their closest friends. And I think uh, Emily, the biggest thing I would probably um, say that I'm asked about a lot is libido, and particularly in you know kind of when you hit perimenopause, that it just basically drops. And we know the hormonal side of everything, you know, is part attribute is you know attributes to that, but. I think the big thing is, is, you know, what can you do? You know, how can you help yourself and obviously help your relations, your relationships as well, you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it is. it's it's You're spot on. It's really important. And I'm perimenopausal. I'm 49. Same. And I'm going, I'm going through that, that at the moment. Um, so I'm right in it with everybody else in that my libido is changing. Yeah. And um, it, it kind of, it seems to kind of do a bit of a roller coaster for me. Sometimes it's, pretty good or really good and then other times it's just completely absent yeah and um so so i really get it um and uh it's just one of those i i guess so the first thing yeah as you said the first thing that's most mo really important is to get your hormones checked so that you know how how your particularly your testosterone is doing because women need testosterone just like men do. We don't need as much of it. We don't produce as much of it, but we produce it in our ovaries. So when we stop, when, you know, when all that starts changing, our testosterone levels drop as well. And that's a big part for a lot of people, a uh, big part of libido. So there's only so much that all the other stuff I'm going to talk about can do if you're really low on yeah. your sex hormones. So it's, it's really important to get those checked and then to get a bit of treatment, which is as far as I know, not, not widespread in Ireland yet. Testosterone treatment for women. No, it's not. Yeah. There are a few people who do it and there are some people who will only treat women who are postmenopausal for it. Um, you know, because it's a, it's considered a HRT, but um, I think that's changing, and I think doctors are becoming more aware of of the value of it and the use. Of it. There's so much research now showing that it's really useful uh, treatment for women to have as well. And you can have it. You can get testosterone that to put um, on your clitoris, even uh, or near to your clitoris if you're to help with sensation because sometimes sensation changes as well 
and the ability to become aroused and the ability to be stimulated to orgasm can become harder as well. So to get the physiological bit taken care of first, then you know where you're at. Yeah. And then we get to the, the really the stuff that I that I can really help with, which is around the relational stuff. And um, I think there's interrelate inter relational and intra relational. So it's the relationship you have with if you have a partner, but but the main and most important one, I think, is the relationship we have with ourselves. Yeah, totally. Big time. And, and, and I guess that that's one, Emily, we're not, we're, let, let's be honest, we're not, for the vast majority of women, we're not great at that. Yeah, well, we're taught not to be, you know, we, yeah. it's not in our nature, we're taught, we're socialized to put ourselves last, or at least after several other people. And by the time women are reaching this age, um, I mean, I, I don't have children. Um, but a lot of women do have children at this age. And so I think for women who have had children, they are even more prone to putting themselves last on the list mm -hmm. and still have children at this age that still need them. So um, we've, we, I think society has got very, very busy. And I think we, are, we almost celebrate busyness and we almost yes. celebrate not having a moment to ourselves. It's almost a competition at times. And everything is about doing this on the go and you can do this and you can have it all and you can you know and, yeah and, and i think it's really really unhealthy and unfair because it's just not possible to to have it all some things have to give sometimes you know um and i think if you get to this age it becomes more apparent again that, that yeah. that's actually the reality for, yeah. for women I, 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 oh God, I, I so believe that. And you know the way, like when you're younger, there's all this thing about, oh God, women, you know, we're meant to be able to multitask. But there's actually a lot of research coming out now to actually say we shouldn't be multitasking, that we should be concentrating on exactly what, you know, one thing at a time as opposed to multitasking. And like you're saying, it's trying to juggle too much. And and then so so, you know, I mean, I think that that's great. That would be fantastic to be able to do one thing at a time. But the reality is <laughs> different to that. Uh, and then we, we so we, we live our lives and we behave the way we behave and we have our, our all our stuff to get done in a day. And then we take the same attitude that gets us through our day into the into our sexual realm. And it really isn't our friend there. OK, so that's when it's really good to learn and it is a case of relearning or learning for the first time how to do things in a slower pace, to be patient with ourselves and to to try to keep our our minds on on one thing at a time. So like it's that's a really big ask when you're not yeah. in the rest of your life to suddenly, oh yeah, I'm gonna just suddenly click into one thing at a time, woman, once I'm in the bedroom and I'll be able to let go of the shopping list. And, oh, <laughs> see that cobweb that i've been there for three weeks that i keep forgetting to you know that's like so yeah so yeah. i think the first thing i uh, the first thing i i like to talk about is how can how can we be kind to ourselves because um that's the basis for sexiness is kindness and feeling safe feeling appreciated feeling understood those are the things that we can then build sexiness on pressure rushing stress uh expectations to be how we were a few years ago or even last week those are the things that kill sexiness mm. so i meet a lot of women who have very very tricky expectations for themselves you know um because they're 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 kind of doing their sexuality how they do the rest of their lives and it just doesn't work so well yeah uh, it's funny emily i was talking to um uh, Sharon, she's a doctor in Waterford and I'm interviewing her next week and we're having a conversation about um, libido and she was kind of saying, she said, oh, you know, when I talk to menopausal women, you know, I kind of explain to them, you know, um, sex doesn't start when you're in the bedroom. She's like, it starts a week before. And I was kind of saying to her, Sharon, I think it starts two weeks before, <laughs> you know, that you have to have that kind of you know, um, you have to have, I guess, the, the, the connected feeling, you know, and the time. Yeah. 
So, so, so yeah, so let's talk about, let's talk about how do you even get into the bedroom if that's where you're choosing to be? Because you might choose to be somewhere else, obviously. How do you even get there? And so you're, you're spot on. Some really important things to know about people in long-term relationships. And, uh, you know, we're talking about women. Um, we're talking about people who have wombs and people who have ovaries who may not identify as women, uh, just to, to make sure we're, we're including everybody. But yeah. um, we're talking about sort of menopause. So women who have, have uteruses or people who have uteruses. But um, this isn't just for, for those people, because the more at work I do, the more I see it affecting people with penises as well. Yeah. Um, this so uh, what I'm talking about is the the way long term relationships create different needs in us. You know, the first we we all know about the honeymoon period or the first six months to two years of a relationship where our hormones pretty much do all the work for us. It's fantastic. You know, just thinking about a person. Yeah, it's, it's lovely. It's really, but it's not. It's not sustainable. It's not meant to be. Um, it's meant to be, you know, then we move into the, the more steady period of our relationship. And, and so anything after sort of two years, and it's different for, for different people, but sort of after two years and onwards, we need to change how we are being sexual in order to be able to be sexual in a really pleasant way. If we keep expecting ourselves to be able to be turned on just by a touch or just by thinking about someone or you know, um, we're not being fair to ourselves. It doesn't work like that. So it's not fair. Um, a lot of people have, you know, they just keep doing what they've been doing for years and it works for years. But at some point, inevitably, if it, even if it doesn't happen till around menopause, it happens that, that, that people with uteruses need to just um, learn again how to, mm -hmm. how to really feel pleasure. So because we don't get the turn on the way we used to, which was a hormonal thing, what you were saying and what the what Sharon, the doctor, doctor was saying is so spot on. In order for us to be able to get into the sexual mood, we need to be to try to keep some kind of simmer in between sexual experiences. So and that is what you're what you're referring to. So women, I put it this way, women need foreplay for foreplay for sex. And the foreplay for foreplay is the non-sexual stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah. So in order for a woman to give a shit about about sexual foreplay, in order for a woman to put down her TV remote, if she's lucky enough to be doing that, or to prioritize being sexual over the cobwebs or <laughs> over, you know, whatever else that needs Home to do. Over homeschooling. <laughs> yeah. They, we need to feel appreciated, interesting, yeah. attractive, funny, engaging. Yes. You know, we need to no. feel things. Otherwise, we're not going to, you know, we can't just switch it on to somebody who doesn't seem to be interested in us any for the rest of the time, other than when they want to get their end away. Yeah, yeah. And this is working, you know, I, I work with all sorts of people and sometimes I work with heterosexual couples where it's the man who feels more like that and sometimes I work with same-sex couples and there's usually one person who feels more like that than the other so it's not necessarily a gendered thing but we're talking about women and people with uteruses tonight so 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 that's the first thing and women will often really um, be hard on themselves that they can't just they don't really like their partner very much or they don't feel that they're liked very much and yet they still expect themselves to be able to be on the on the boil. And so that's not going to happen. And how do you get that simmer? How do you get that foreplay to foreplay? Um, well, that's I mean, that's the stuff if you're in a relationship that you, you your partner needs to understand that this is how you work and this is what you need. And that that it isn't it isn't an option. You know, um, it, it's it's a part of what we need in order to feel um, sensual and to feel like we even want to try to get in the mood. So that's the relational bit. When And then as well, no matter whether you're in a relationship or not, the other part to, to keeping on the simmer is, well, there's a number of things. I mean, there's your health, there's how you, ex you exercise, that you eat pretty well, that you get pretty much get some good rest, that you watch your stress levels. They all really mess with libido. Yeah. And then the other bit is masturbation. Yeah. Um, and again, for women who are busy, 
who do masturbate, they will often do it in quite a perfunctory way because it's a thing to get done. It oh, gives God, them yeah. Yeah. yeah, so how quickly can I have my orgasm so I can get on with my either fall asleep or get on with whatever it is. And that approach to masturbation tends not to work so well for us either as we get older. A, it takes us longer to get aroused and B, it takes us longer to get to reach orgasm for many of us. And that's a lot to do with blood flow to the genitals. Um, and so we just need to give ourselves more time. But also it's an attitude yeah, I was, I was just going to say that. I mean, do you not think, I just think, you know, if you were to put a poll out there and say, you know, how much women masturbate on a regular basis, I think the results would be pretty shocking. I think yeah. very low. Yeah, yeah. And I think there's lots of good reasons for that. So when our libido starts to drop, we often stop masturbating. And there's lots of research to show that women who masturbate at any age tend to have a better libido. It's not a guarantee and it's not a fix, an all, an all, all fixer, but it, it does help. So, so how do you, why would you, how does a woman get herself to masturbate when she's, she doesn't have any libido? That's a really tricky thing. But, but, but you've got to remember that the way we work as we get older is we, um, we need to decide we're going to get turned on and then take action. Even for our own stuff, even for, for our own self-pleasure. It's not that we, if we wait to be horny before we take action, we're not going to have any sort of sex life. Yeah, yeah. So you decide, okay. And, 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 and what I have discovered and what I know for myself is that if I consider what I'm doing as self-love rather than a perfunctory polish of the jelly tot, <laughs> You know, oh Emily, I love it. <laughs> that's not mine. That's my bestie's. I love it too. It's just the best. Um, if if we approach it as a self loving exercise yeah. and we take the pressure for orgasm out of it, we're more inclined towards it. Yeah, yeah. Well, that it's changing your how you're thinking about it, isn't it? Straight away, even as you say that, it's got much more positive connotations and it's much more kind of, you know, you're helping yourself. Yeah, I love jelly tots too. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, when my kids ask for jelly tots again, you really never think about them in a different way. You'll never be the same. Yeah, and you know, you can have your own little clothes and I'm just off to do a bit of polishing. You know, there's also <laughs> ways you can use that. Oh, I love housework these days. <laughs> so, but to, to come back to it, so um, some women, of course, really get into masturbation and really can give themselves the time and they they understand this but for the women who are struggling and i i i'm struggling myself um to to do this because it's it's not you know it's just human it's not easy even i'm like teaching this and it's what i talk about all the time and yet i still have to decide right i'm going to give myself some love now yeah you know and so so if you take the pressure of orgasm out of the equation certainly to begin with because hasn't orgasm become a very interesting thing for the the, the orgasm female orgasm has become well sure for a lot of women yeah 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 well obviously it's turned into you know something that's all perfect and you know I, I it's like everything it becomes a hollywood kind of movie nearly you know and uh, and actually a lot of women's I'm sorry I keep saying women because I want to say people with uteruses and I don't know how to say that quicker in a, in a bet. So if anyone has a way for me to say it quicker. Um, I think we can just say, I can think you can just say women and people will know that are listening. They, they well, listen. people who aren't ident don't identify as women can feel excluded um, if we don't, if we don't use the right language. So I'm just, that's what I'm just curious about. I don't want to exclude anyone because it's important that we don't. Um, so, so um, what I was saying there is beginning to, so the orgasm, yes. So it, the orgasm has been hijacked, I think a lot. The female orgasm has been hijacked uh, and we have been, and often a person's partner will make the female orgasm about them and not about the woman having the orgasm. So I get this a lot. I get a lot Please of... Explain that to me, Emily. Sorry, what do you mean there? I get a lot of women telling me that they 
feel so bad that they can't orgasm because it makes their partner feel bad. And then that their partner, okay. their partner feels there's something wrong with the woman or with the partner. And that, uh, you know, even for younger relationships or younger women, I hear a lot of, you know, there's something really wrong with me because my partner says every other woman they've been with my, uh, okay. orgasmed. And so it's obviously me. Okay. And I'm like, it is obviously not you. That's <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just to get the reality check on that one because mm -hmm. somebody's lying to that person or they're lying something is going because no woman orgasms all the time. Yeah, yeah. Just, just remember that. It's not. It's not. So, so if you so if you can take the pressure off orgasm, take it away from orgasm. There's a lot of women who have tried to masturbate, weren't able to orgasm, and just give up because they think they should be able to just be able to do it like, okay. like that. But yeah. it's a skill that you have to practice. However, I, I'm jumping around it, but I want to come back to the self-loving attitude because this is the really important bit for women and for people with uterus, for everybody, actually. It's just so important that we slow down and remember that we are entitled to and we deserve to feel loving touch. Mm. Full yes. stop. Yes. How do you do that? You might do that with... With, you might do that. I like to rub the inside of my arm. I really like that feeling really gentle there. I also like to play with my boobs quite a lot. Um, and I like, to, I like to hold my vulva. I cup my vulva and I just hold my vulva and give her a little hand hug. I do that quite a lot. Those are the things I can do during the day because I'm like that. I know not, <laughs> not everyone will be doing that. Um, um, <laughs> just to give myself a little bit of love there's no pressure to for me to perform there's no pressure for me to reach any goal there's yes. no goal there it's just do you deserve to feel loving touch full stop of course you do yeah and the interesting thing is when we start to feel a bit shit or a bit low due to hormones due to relationships due to work due to whatever that's when we withdraw our self-love that's when we withdraw all the things that that feel really nurturing and good for us so the first stage is learning how to give yourself permission to just feel pleasure. <laughs> Not in Sainsbury's though. <laughs> Someone is saying, oh, well, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Emily, <laughs> only because we don't have Sainsbury's in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Poor old Tesco's gets an awful lot of I am joking. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, it is. Um, so the first thing is if you can, if you, so the first thing is to just allow yourself permission to take a little bit of time and to feel affectionate touch. It's why I call it masturbation. So people know what I'm talking about, but then I move quickly from that and I call it self love because it's okay. the attitude. Okay. And I think that's, um, that's, I'd never thought about that before Emily, in terms of, you know, just taking the time to kind of just, it's like being kind to your body and okay you might have a shower and you might mo you might moisturize but god we all do it so quickly that yeah. we're slamming it on and you know you're <laughs> at the door whatever you know. so i think that's um yeah that's a that's a great tip and you can do it while you know I, I'm, I'm talking about starting to get used to and giving yourself yeah. permission to feel affectionate touch doesn't have to be sexual at the beginning you're this is how you get into it it's how you give yourself permission to to um, explore so you take all the pressure off get rid yes. of the idea of orgasm for now and just find out what parts of your body feel nice to be touched what parts of your body thank you for a touch and mm -hmm. you can find out some quite interesting things i like my fingers to be pulled i didn't know that okay so i started doing this sort of thing because it's not something that people do because they think you're going to well, when I was a kid, if you pulled someone's finger, you'd get farted. So, <laughs> you know, maybe, so, so it's, it's a new thing to just have your fingers pulled. And it just, so anyway, it's a very individual thing. And it, but it's the starting point of learning what you enjoy now. Okay, yeah. So yeah. The, I, have, I have four golden guidelines. And they're, they're educate, masturbate, lubricate, and communicate. Okay, yeah. So the first bit, we're talking about educating ourselves, finding some really good websites, finding some really good books that give us permission to be sexual, to be sensual, but also to, um, to educate ourselves about how our genitals work, how arousal works for women and how to touch ourselves. So that there's lots of great 
stuff out there now that teaches teaches that really good sex positive stuff and can, just on that emily because i know you dipped into my live with jane the other day and jane and i have jane lewis we we took we've done quite a few lives together and one of the things that you know i've been trying to say to women and and jane is the same is try at least once a month to check your vulva get a mirror to basically really understand because one thing i'm finding time and time again is the basic anatomy not everybody really understands totally. where the vagina is where the vulva is you know how things work yeah absolutely so, you know what and, you're, you're and actually there can be quite a lot of shame uh, a lot of women yeah. really have no connection with their vulva at all and they really feel very frightened of their own vulvas. I mean, I, I work with women who feel that way quite a lot. And, and it's really a process for them to get to the point of being able to look at their vulvas. So again, if you start with loving touch and you take a little bit of time to do that and you breathe nice, long, deep breaths and you check what you're thinking, then you're going to get a good foundation for moving forward into something that feels more sensual then into something that feels more sexual. So you mm -hmm. make sure you know how to keep your breathing nice and deep whilst giving yourself pleasurable touch. What you're doing there is you're teaching your nervous system to calm. be calm while being touched. And, and you start, you start non-sexually so that you start to build that confidence for yourself. And also then you begin to notice when you get worked up or when you start getting anxious or worried or speeding up, you'll notice, you'll feel it differently in your body. So this is lovely, isn't it? It's so gentle and, yeah. it's, just kind yeah. and it's just, it's just really easy to, to start with. So a bath, a shower, then get yourself, get yourself just a little bit of touch. Just start with five minutes, um, a couple of times a week. So it's not a long time and you start with it and you begin to feel the benefits of it. And then you can start building on that. But the, 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 the bit about teaching your body to be calm while being touched is a vital foundation for any self-loving that okay. you're going to go into more Brain. after. Brain if, you're able to, if you're able to look at your, your vulva and have a good look at it, absolutely brilliant thing to do, really, really important thing to do. But don't muddle it into your self-loving. Okay. You know, it, it's, it's like the stuff it's, with when you're going to a pelvic floor physio and you're getting loads of really, really technical exercises to do. Yeah. Um, it can be really hard to see your vulva as a sexual organ and not as a piece of machinery that you're checking every day to see if it's working or not working. Yeah, yeah, I guess. So, so don't muddle up your, don't muddle up your, um, you know, your exercises with your, your sexy time. Okay, okay. Because one will kill the other. And sorry, just before we lose the question, someone's just asked there, do you have any recommended websites or resources? I would definitely recommend uh, Jo Devine. Uh, that's Sam Evans's website is very good in terms of she's got good information. Um, and Emily, I don't know if you have other resources you recommend. Um, oh, my God. Has that name just gone out of my head? Emily. Emily Power Smith, you. No, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and I've got that bad. Yeah, my memory. My God, my memory. Um, Come As You Are is a fantastic book. It's okay. by Emily, and I can't remember her second name. It's gone out of my head. Perimenopause. I love you. Have, you. have you got that at home? Can you take a picture of it and send it to me and I can post it up later? Yeah, you? sure. Yeah, or you can just yeah. get, it on, get it online very easily. Okay. It's, it's a really good book. It's, it's, a, it's got all the scientific basis so that there's, there's no nonsense. There's, it's, I'm not... I'm not, I like to know the science. I like to know yeah. the research behind what I'm talking about rather than coming from the less scientific side of things. So, yeah. so, so this book is really good for you to understand exactly how we all work. And it also talks you through how to come to bring yourself to orgasm. And it's a really, really good book. Okay. So I'd highly recommend that. Betty Dodson oh, is my, yeah. my friend and my mentor. I'm wearing her little clitoris necklace that she gave the last time I saw her last year someone um, Emily I can beat that one of my friends knitted me um a clitoris I must I'll put a picture up of in different colors she clitted it for you <laughs> it's brilliant brilliant I, I must I'll, I'll find it and put a picture up of it. 
<laughs> They're fantastic. So, so she has a great website. Her and and Carlin Ross, who is her her partner, they do amazing video blogs all the time on YouTube. So Dodson and Ross. Yes, and that's the name. Somebody Nagoski. Emily Nagoski. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. So yeah, the um, she's fantastic. Has great resources for women, and and those video blogs they do, they really talk about absolutely everything. everything. Mm -hmm. You will find, and their website is packed with bloggers, but also their own information. And they have things like vulva gallery, a vulva gallery, photos of vulvas on her website. So you. Wow. Can you can get to see what vulvas look like. Because if you're a straight woman, you may have only seen your own. Yeah, yeah. And in that case, a lot of women think their vulvas are weird or ugly because they, they imagine that everyone's vulva is the same as a porn star's vulva. <laughs> yeah. It's a real thing. It's yeah. a real problem. Women think they're really ugly and they don't realize that actually vulvas are as different as our faces. And they come in all shapes and sizes and colors. And there is, and, and the, the, the vulvas that we often, you know, see in porn, if we, if we watch porn, are often, they've been, you know, they've had surgery and they've had bleaching and they've had hair removal and all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. it's not everyday life, really, sure it's not. Well, these are people who make their money out of being, out of being, having sex. So, of course, they're going to put everything into looking the best they can for that particular mainstream heterosexual male ideal um you know it makes sense so if they want to get you know get paid so um but it's not the real it's not reality yes. and nor is the yeah. sex they're having not reality yeah. either yeah. so 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 did you want to did you want to say Sorry, i want to say another thing there another good website um maybe not as in-depth as some of the others but certainly very good is the yes yes uh, website they have a lot of um blogs and articles on theirs as well that's one of the it's it, that's a product that i use i you we might get to talk about that soon but um that's definitely another website to check out yeah um there are lots of great uh, oh, by the way for for young women for young people uh, it's not just for women teenagers through to 20s scarletteen is a fantastic website okay it's american but it's really great to get um sex positive um information and education uh for everybody for any person who is interested and it's all up to date scientifically backed and sex positive and it's for everybody it's it's really um inclusive so nobody's left out okay. and it's really good for parents who want to talk to their their kids it's for older now it's for teenagers not for and the conversations yeah. need to be happening way before teens really but um you know if you're a bit stuck and you haven't talked to your child about it and you're worried or you would like them to point them in the direction of really good education, <clears throat> that's a really great one. It's good for adults too, actually. You can learn a lot from it. Yeah. And then there's really good videos, you know, really good. Um, so if you watch ethical or feminist porn, you're going to be able to educate yourself because the, the orgasms that people are having in those movies are real orgasms. They have all sorts of body types, shapes and sizes and ages. And, um, and they are really loving the sex they're having. The people in the, in the, in the films are free range and organic. I like to say, in other words, they're happy to be there. They're paid well, they're healthy, yeah. no being coerced, which is a big question for a lot of people about mainstream yeah. Yeah. porn. Yeah. But, uh, but you can also pick up loads of great tips and ideas because what you're seeing is actually real. Okay. It's not pretend. Yeah. Yeah. So that they're, they're really good. So Erica Lust is a great. Oh yes. He's yes. a great filmmaker. Um, and there's a site, uh, Pink. What's it called? Do you know what? I'll have to put up a list. We can share that after. We can share. Yeah. That we'll do that we'll do that after so so there's all the, and, and using a bit of erotica is really good for women as well reading listening to things watching things can be a really lovely way to help get you in the mood when you're self-loving if you're moving into the more sexual realm but but you know i would think orgasm is is a needs needs to be approached gently and with patience and with kindness to ourselves, not as something to get off your list yes. and not as something to feel bad about if you don't achieve it within a certain length of time. And, you know, it just doesn't work like that. 
And, and Emily, are you saying for, you know, I'm sure there's uh, maybe people watching who, who don't masturbate. Um, so I think what you are basically saying is the first thing really is that self-loving, you know, it's, you know, starting with the touch and um, just the kindness towards your body. Then over probably what could be months, weeks, months, it's working up to, um, you know, uh, uh, work, it's just working up to more. Yeah, so then you get into, you've got to understand about your clitoris. So a lot of women don't know that, you know, that that's the clitoris. Um, so that's roughly, that's a roughly what is, the size of a clitoris in real life. It's roughly it's, that. Oh, wow, okay. That's um, so it's, you know, we're all different. So it's not, not every clitoris is that size, but that's, so this is the little nub that we've all been, well, we haven't been taught about. Those of us lucky enough to know about it, that's the bit we've known about. But this is the clitoris. So all but this bit is, some women, this shaft is, is quite prominent on, and you can see it externally. And for a lot of women, it's completely internal and this is the only bit they see. But we all have these arms and we all have these bulbs and we all get erections. So because you can't get a mouth or a hand around a clitoris the way you can around a penis, it takes way longer to get the blood into the clitoris. So this is why we need to slow down because as we get a bit older, our blood flow slows down too. Yeah. So you can have an orgasm. Those quick orgasms women have, they're localized. They're not going to be from a fully erect clitoris. They're going to be from stimulating this little area, which has more nerve endings here than a whole penis has. So we can have great, all orgasms are great. But we can have orgasms quite quickly just by stimulating that, that way or toys or whatever. Or we can give ourselves more time and massage and breath and allow the, the bulbs to fill and to, to get real tumescence. And then we may be able to have different kinds of orgasms. Okay. Some women find that more intense. These, these bulbs here, the, the vaginal opening would be here. So these, when you get erect, almost wrap around the vagina. So for women who have vaginal orgasms, often it's indirect stimulation of the, of the clitoris anyway. Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot to learn. So this is why we need to take time. So, you know, Pleasure Mechanics is a really great website. It's American. It's run by two women who are partners, actually. And they do amazing videos and video courses. And they have a lovely video for vulva massage which is something we don't really give ourselves time to do. Usually it's straight to the clitoris and a quick rub yeah. and see what happens and that's yeah. that. Yeah. But um, vulva massage is really good for you. And again, you're not trying to orgasm. You're just bringing blood to the vulva and blood to the labia and blood to the clitoris, which really helps as you get older. So that's a really beautiful part of loving touch. And it, it for some women, does move them into arousal. But I guess, and then saying, you, you know, you want to kind of start looking at it from the point of view of it doesn't have to. And if it does, then great. Yeah, take the pressure. We have enough pressure, don't yeah. we? We have enough pressure to walk around in high heels with our lips stuck out and our boobs shoved <laughs> up and our roots done and, our, and ready for sex at any at the drop of a hat while we're on <laughs> rollerblades with our Dalmatians having our periods in white trousers. <laughs> I mean, jeez, oh, hungry no. enough to be. That just takes up all of my time, that rollerblading with my Dalmatian and my period. Your, your life is so different to mine. <laughs> I remember there was an ad for body form, and it was a woman on rollerblades with a Dalmatian no. and white jeans. Don't, and I wanted don't, to, don't, uh, don't get me started on those ads. I just wanted to punch that woman, and it wasn't her fault. She was just acting, no. you know, just really. So the pressure we're under already. If it's love, if we're loving ourselves, we don't need to do it. It doesn't need to be goal orientated. It just needs to feel nice. Yeah. The great and thing about, sorry, about sex and being sexual. I break it into three things. I break it into pleasure, arousal, and stimulation to orgasm. And we forget about pleasure and we try to rush to the orgasm or we, you know, we, we speed things up. But the joy and the dance and the feast of great sex means we you know it, it involves just pleasure and yeah. slowing down and really having yeah. time to taste and have all our senses and awakened yeah yeah 
Uh, and um, I, I, you know, the, that made me think about. It. I remember the, the first time I met you, you gave me a chocolate in the shape of a penis. <laughs> that was my. Because hi, my name's Emily. Have a chocolate. <laughs> yeah, they were. They were. Keto, they were they keto chocolates. Oh, they were. They were, you made them yourself. They were lovely. But yeah. it, it's it's like it's that's the senses, isn't it? It's like. Um, everything firing off in you know every different direction and and emily what about and i know i'm probably jumping around a bit here now and um, what about in instances where and i know this is a whole bigger subject and we we'll probably have to do another one but what where do you start with um a person who's experiencing painful sex and because this is an issue for a lot of women and uh, uh, like you know I've talked a lot with Jane about kind of vaginal atrophy dryness and and you know what you can do and so forth but what I still do find is not the physical side but what builds is a very big mental and um, nearly a mental block because yeah. the fear yeah fear nearly takes over from any improvements that can be made by moisturizers HRT etc and you know any any guidance um, yeah it's, the, the good news is it's you, you you do what i've been talking about okay so we're back to breathing slowing down being patient and kind to yourself and teaching your nervous system that it, you can experience touch and it doesn't hurt so you don't start on your genitals where it hurts you start elsewhere and you teach your body to calm and you and you watch your thoughts so what you're talking about is pain expectation and it's a real thing mm -hmm. and it does bring on pain and it's, you know, it's not just in the head and you can just change it. It's, 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 it's we really need to take it seriously. So it, it, all of this does take, it does take effort. You know, I'm, I'm not saying this is all easy. Yeah. Um, but, but I work with people who have sexual pain a lot. I work with that a lot. And so the idea is to start with what feels safe to you? Where is it good? You, and you, you find that for yourself and there isn't, that uniform answer to that it's whatever it is for that person and for some people it isn't about touching their their vulva at all it's about starting somewhere else and learning to lower their their deeper and and lower their nervous system mm. and and also um what they're thinking and as soon as they get to the point where they're going oh god oh god it's going to hurt that's when they stop and they do their breathing again and they keep going with the touch that doesn't hurt and they center themselves again and they get calm again. And then they do another little bit and that's how you, you keep going. Now this is, I'm, I'm talking about, this is for women who have hopefully, as you say, have found the cause of the pain and are now having that treated. Like there's someone has just, um, Marianne's just put up a message there. You know, my partner now is afraid to touch me as I keep going out, you know? Yeah. That's... But that's I'm really glad that's been brought up because we women as well will often focus on themselves. I'm the one with the problem. If I get fixed, everything will be fine, which is a a huge amount of pressure for her to feel. But also it isn't the case because their partners will often have developed their own fears around being sexual and around touch because they don't want to hurt their loved one. So th there will often be a, a need for a little bit of extra help, whether it's talking to someone like me. I think a lot of couples do need that and some need therapy, but some just need some skills and some coaching mm -hmm. and just a few sessions just to get them on track with, with, okay, the situation now is I don't have pain, but I'm still terrified. I'm going to have pain. Yes. And my partner is still terrified that I'm going to have pain. Yeah. And yeah. it's a habit that's developed. It's a thought habit. So again, that's why we're watching. It's a three prong. You're watching your thoughts, your breath, and the touch yes. and so you, you go gently and you go slowly and you so where do you feel pain well i feel pain you know when in, on penetration okay so do you feel pain if you if you cup your vulva no that doesn't hurt okay so start there and breathe and get really confident that that doesn't hurt and you just build in it's a slow process and you build it up slowly and 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 you may need to get help and support to help with the, the thought habits and to help with with the emotional 
you know, there's been loss there. There's, there's grief to be felt. And there's loss when, you're, when your sexual relationship changes and your, sexual, your sexuality changes. And again, a lot of women don't give themselves space to feel that loss because they just feel so, they feel kind of guilty in it, like it's their fault. So then if it's your fault, you shouldn't mm. be allowed to feel grief for what you've lost. But all of these things are really important to create a new space for you to, to, to start building a new set that isn't like what you had before it's going to be new and, so and emily sorry wouldn't would would you say to you know I, I often say to women that i work with that you know it's really important that they have the conversation with their partner in terms of because a lot of times what i would feel is that you know women might say you know they've no libido or they've had issues with vaginal atrophy but then what becomes an issue is is that they they feel that you know, if they have any any little bit of intimacy that then it's like, oh, God, this is going to lead to sex. Oh, God. And everything gets all tense. And then, you know, um, it changes everything. So that's where I kind of think, you know, that a conversation has to be had, you know, with your partner. If you have a partner in terms of this is where things are at and explain how you feel. And yeah, and, and it's it's many conversations and yeah. you keep them short and you keep them light and you keep them out of the sexual space. You do them with your clothes on where you're both feeling okay. You don't do them when you're trying to be sexual because it's too vulnerable. It's, it's too, there's too much can go wrong. So you do it when you're in a comfortable situation, out for a walk if that suits you or over a glass of wine if that suits you and keep the conversation short. Don't wreck yourself trying to think you have to cover Great everything. Advice. Yeah. Great and advice. allow for your partner to have to hear what you're saying and 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 give them a chance to absorb it so uh, don't expect them to come back to you there and then in that moment with a great answer allow them space to maybe not even respond much to you in that but keep it to 10 minutes and just say you know maybe have a conversation about the conversation first just to ease yes. again ease into the conversation it doesn't have you don't have to jump in you can ease in gently and ease your partner in gently this is something i'd really like to talk to you about do you think we'd, we'd be able to have that conversation would you be open to it what would help start there you know get them yes. on side first rather than launch into oh god okay so i've learned this and um i, I and i'm ready to, because that, <laughs> that that's much harder <laughs> yeah as you cook in the dinner <laughs> and, and yeah and uh, so i just see someone saying treatment for rona so let's move a little bit to yes. um to to the, we, the... Have, um, we have 11 minutes left before instagram cuts us off so uh, emily we we definitely we do another one so you know whatever we can cover then. so we, well let's just talk a little bit because i've we've talked a little bit about education yes we've talked about self-love We've just talked about communication. So let's talk about lubrication for the last bit, will we? Yeah. So again, as you've covered, so I'm not going to spend much time. You need to know how your estrogen is doing and you need to get yourself topical estrogen treatment in the form of pessaries and, and or creams if that's what's what if, if that's causing the uh, dryness. Comfort. The rawness inside the vagina around this age that's usually pretty much guaranteed to be a problem is your, your lowered estrogen topical estrogens are now known to be safe for women even if they've had breast cancer yeah so just but a lot of doctors in ireland don't know that yet yeah so we have to be the educated ones and we often have to educate our doctors or go to a different doctor yeah yeah you are you are able to get it and it is it is really, really good. You use it for, say it's a pessary, you use it for every day, for every night for two weeks and then see how you are. And usually then you go on to a maintenance dose Absolutely. two or three times a week for, forever then probably because it, it, it reverts if you don't keep doing it. Um, so that's, you really need to, if it's raw, you really yeah. need to get that checked. Don't, that's not something you have to live with. Mm -hmm. The next bit, which you've talked about is vaginal moisturizers. Vagina moisturizers. <laughs> I can't speak after seven. <laughs> um, sorry, I just see um, um, it is bad, GFM, um, that Emily is talking to. But obviously, when it comes to local estrogen uh, for vaginal atrophy, there are other, there's other creams and so forth that you can look at. But it's definitely like Emily said, you definitely, you want to have 
you want to get a doctor who will um, check you and examine you. And I believe know... Believe you. Believe yeah, you. Yeah. So um, Dr. Sharon, who I'm interviewing next week, is from Waterford, um, who I know is near where you are. So she would definitely be a resource well worth having. And the 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 um the um women's health clinic in Dunleary, she's uh, oh, Rachel, yes. Rachel Mackey is very on the ball as well yes. and does testosterone yes. treatment. Yes. Um. So, first of all, get that checked because no amount of great lubrication or moisturizer is going to fix low estrogen. That needs checking. Yeah. Once you're getting that sorted, if it if it's if it's if your estrogen is is okay, uh, vaginal moisturizers can be fantastic, and you you use the yes, yes. organic yes. vaginal moisturizer. I, I I think I'm a great fan. I think it's fantastic as well. So that's often before you need estrogen, or you know it it can be really useful. And, and just on that, and I know I talk about this a lot, but just to reiterate again, there are a, a lot of uh, vaginal moisturizers on the market. And, uh, you know, I would just say when you go into a farm, there's a lot on the shelf, which just don't, goes. Don't buy them. Don't, don't buy them. Buy and them. it shows what a big industry this is. But be very careful to know the ingredients and know what you're putting into your body. And really? also to say, I love yes, it works for me. It doesn't mean it'll work for everybody. So it's finding it's finding the one that works for you in terms of our acidity, our uh, pH levels is different for all of us. So it's kind of. Tweet, yeah. find your sweet spot. <laughs> yeah, and and then with and then always use lube. I don't care. I don't care if you if you lubricated fantastically last time you had sex. Always have lube by your bed or wherever you're having sex, and and you know always use it. It's great. It make a it makes you an expert at hand jobs. I mean, it's total win for that. <laughs> but a lot of women. A lot of women. Um, you know, are too gentle with penises because they're worried that they're going to hurt it because their clitorises are so sensitive. Yeah. So all the worries are out the window once you have lube. That's for if you're with penises. Okay. But but just for having your own vulva, even at, even the outside of your labia, I'm I'm touching mine now as I'm talking. Actually, even as you're is as you're um being just touched or massaged, always use lube because the skin is so delicate. Yeah. It feels way better. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you're going to use, if you're, if, you're, if you're experimenting with lube, we were beginning to talk about it last time, Catherine, but we, we, it, I was talking about the good lubes and the bad lubes. And I was thinking afterwards, and I was thinking, well, I know people who use uh, lubes that I wouldn't recommend or that I, I don't use, and they're fine with them. They're happy with them. Yeah. But again, do not think that if you've tried a lube and it's stung or it caused a problem that you can't use lube. You just have to find the right one. And I would always recommend organic. And I think yeah, yes, a really good place they, to begin. If um, they've just put a put their their they've logged in here. They put a great. They have twenty five percent discount at the moment on yes products. So fantastic. It's well, well worth, worth it. Out. Everyone, yeah. I have I have the, their oil based. I have their water based. I have their uh, anal lube, and I have their vaginal moisturizers because they work for me, and I. I recommend them happily and with confidence because they're really, really um, great products and great women. Oh yeah, great. Uh, sorry, I, I um, uh, uh, listen. I'm, I'm a complete convert to, to yes. I, I love them, um, and I know there's another one. Karen's just mentioned here. Australian bush flower essences have a lovely. I think it's called the whipped cream. That's a fantastic cream to use externally if you feel you have inflammation. Um, around the vulva and um, it's I, I, I know Karen and I know a lot of other women have found that to be really really beneficial but it, it's not internal use it's external and um, so it's just another one to mention yeah and and really important not to forget the vulva yes yeah. you know to keep the vulva in good shape as well as just the the internal the vaginal and then even if you find that you're not getting enough slip uh, and yes, you can learn this on their website, but yes, have brought out the idea of double glide where you use both, yeah. both the oil based and the water based at the same time, because the water based dries in pretty quickly. And if your vagina is is drier, it's going to absorb that very quickly. So you'll need to keep reapplying. But if you use the oil based first and then a layer of the water based, 
the oil based works as a barrier and stops it from from getting sucked into the vaginal tissue. <laughs> so it depends what you're using, what you're using to penetrate with. We've, so we've, four mi we've, we've four minutes left and I thought you were going to show us some toys. That might have to be another night. It's going to be another, yeah, it's going to be another <laughs> night because actually yeah. I, I, I uh, want to show you, yeah, I don't have the right array. No, no, next one, next one. And, and we don't want to rush it. We and, need and to take our time, Catherine. <laughs> And a point to note, because um, I know this won't save on the ITGV, the comments don't save, but um, remember not to use the oil base with condoms. They, they, don't. Break, they will yeah. break almost instantly. Yeah. yeah. And silicone is another lube we haven't talked about. And some women find it really good. It's very slippery and ongoingly slippery. Um, it's not a natural product, so you won't find it with yes, but... Um, there are some other brands who do who do a good silicone and some women love it. Yes. Uh, it lasts way longer and it's not as thick as the oil. It's a kind of in between, but it's not safe with silicone toys. Okay. 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 So we're going to do another one. So next week I've got my brain week where I've got 13 interviews lined up. So the week after Emily, we might try and do one. And will you bring some of your toys to show us? <laughs> sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm loving this, Catherine, and you're my yeah. first. You've popped my cherry. You've popped my Insta Live cherry. <laughs> I, I, need, I did that for Jane Lewis as well. Uh, you monkey. Uh, yeah, I've done it for quite a few, for quite a few women. <laughs> well, I tell you, you sure have. <laughs> so, well, hopefully I, I might get the courage and the know, to do my own at some point. Oh, well, you because you you will and you know once you get over doing one or two yourself i mean there's so you don't even think twice about it i mean and look for me i didn't start breathing after about 20 minutes because i knew it wasn't going to cut off <laughs> yeah yeah it's so, been great really you know, really good cover to that yeah yeah i'm down i'm i'm in a friend's house i was trying to cover all avenues oh well done. no i had a, a digital media company did some tweaks on my phone and I, so I don't actually know what's worked, but anyway, something's worked. <laughs> something's worked. You did it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so any final notes you'd like to leave? We've one, one and a half minutes left, so. Well, I think it's, it's, it's just, let me see. I had written down a few things here. Oh, yeah. So uh, we've one and a half minutes. No, let's do another one on okay. how to take it from self-love to and sensuality more okay. into the sexual realm and a bit more on how to reinvent your sex life um if you have a partner how to do that what's a few tricks and a few games and a few bits that can be really really useful for that yeah great okay great um, I, there's been loads of lovely comments um from people they won't say emily so you won't be able to see them all um but loads of lovely comments there um people thanking you for all the great information so um, thank you so much. And I'm glad, I'm glad we, <laughs> we, we kept, it didn't stop. <laughs> oh, me too. I'm very glad. Thank you so much for inviting me and for popping my cherry. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't pop, many cherries left to pop, Catherine. Pop, popping your cherry in jelly tots, I don't know. <laughs> um, and so just to, to anyone who's tuned in, um, do share and do look out for next week because... Um, obviously, I have Dr. Lisa Moscone on Wednesday, and I've got some fantastic um, speakers lined up for all of next week talking about brain health. Um, I could do with watching some of those if I remember. Uh, um, it's, a, it's a huge, personally, it's just a big thing with me, with my mum. And it's the landscape is changing so quickly in terms of um, research into Alzheimer's and dementia that, um, you know, there's tons we can learn. So it's just really important. For me, they can try and share, share to, with everyone. Okay, who's off to knit a willy? <laughs> I love that. Oh, you've got some very fun comments tonight. <laughs> um, well, thanks. To Make sure you use a soft wool. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of irritating otherwise. <laughs> Um, thanks to everyone for watching and this will be saved to ITV. I'll save it after this. It generally takes maybe five, ten minutes and then it will be saved and um, you can watch it there. And uh, probably the first week of July, myself and Emily will arrange um, a, a follow up.
Okay, Emily. And you know where to find me. I'm okay. Empowers Me on Instagram, on Twitter, which I don't do much of. And I have a Facebook page of Empowers Me, which I don't, haven't been yes. so good on, but I'm starting to get active with it again. Yes. And that's my website as well, as you'll know from seeing me on here. I'll, um, I'll post some of those tomorrow so that people can see the details. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Happy, Happy weekend. weekend. I'm off to have a martini now. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy you take care bye oh, oh, i thought you were going to say something other than a martini <laughs> well that's after the martini okay, okay. one thing at a time <laughs>